and your conversations just go where they go. So <laughs> That's I, I'm true. fine with that. I'll try to keep up. He gets us. <laughs> I'm definitely not as entertaining as the two of you. So I am, uh, <laughs> I, I got my, just so I could fit in. I figured this was a requirement to uh, have a little something oh, yeah, while we're so. going. So bravo, well bravo. Well done. <laughs> and honestly, that was a fantastic intro to Captain Matt. So I'm using that. <laughs> Welcome aboard the Funny Boat yeah, just... Podcast. I am your host, Captain Boomies. With yeah. me. As always, the broker with the beard. How are you doing, Cap? Well, I got my jazzy hands going, <laughs> and I got my uh, ceramic detail hitting on all points. Uh, everything's fantastic. It's a great day. Well, we have a very exciting guest today, and that is Captain Matt. Captain Matt is with the Boat Buyer Secret Weapon, which I just love to say. It's really fun. <laughs> it feels very... Uh, intense and I have no secrets because I tell them all to the internet way too often. We should all we that. should knock that off. <laughs> but, but, but welcome, <laughs> welcome. We're so glad to have you on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, definitely looking forward to, to talking to you all. They always start out that way. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see in 30 minutes how I, uh, I, I gotta get going. I hear my daughter calling me. Yeah, I I, you know, there's a thing about a... <laughs> well, Captain Matt, you're you're no stranger to this kind of thing, though. You have a show that I love. I really appreciate that you take on all of these live questions. Yeah. You, and you do it a lot. Like, people ask you a lot of questions about boats. <laughs> they do. And it's so much fun. I, I jump in there and I sneaky watch you a lot uh, just to see how you respond to some of the questions. Because, I mean, new boaters have a lot of questions and they need help. Is that, how, how did you mm. decide that you were going to be the person to help them? It, it started, I've always been, I sold boats, oh shoot, 15 years ago now. And I was always about education, you know, helping them find the right boats. And I love going out of the water and training them on their boats when they were new. Um, and I was working during the pan or before the pandemic in the industry uh, in sales and marketing. When the pandemic hit, like nobody needed sales and marketing help. And I was like, I know a little bit about boats. I know about YouTube, started creating the uh, the channel and just what are the questions that people asked when I, I was selling boats? And I just started answering them. People, they they were interested and listened, which blew me away. And, um, and so I'm like, well, let me try a live, see how that goes. And so yeah. every Sunday at 8.30, <laughs> we do a live and uh, just it goes where it goes. <laughs> Not only not yeah. only do you do it live, but you're doing it across multiple platforms. How do people find you just so we can mm. jump into that? So you can go boat by our secret weapon um, on the YouTube uh, boaters secret weapon on, I think, Facebook and Instagram, maybe. And then the the website is boaters secret weapon dot com. So it. those are the, the main spots. So my first introduction to you was actually getting tagged in one of your videos because somebody yes. desperately needed some help learning how to run their small pleasure boat. And you said, well, where are you at? You're up in the Chesapeake. Okay. Let me find you somebody. <laughs> and all of a sudden I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> well, it's, you know, there's all these people all around. Like I've got a good bit of knowledge when it comes to boating, but it's like a sliver of all the boating knowledge out there, right? So I'm like, oh, yeah. hey, there's times where I'm not going to know the answer. Most of the time, I'm not going to know the answer. But, you know, between the two of you, uh, between, you know, all the different boating channels out there, Born Again Boating, uh, Aaron down there, um, uh, uh, Boat Works Today on Fiberglass Work. You've got all of these different people that just know stuff that um, like, hey, Go check them out. They, they are a great resource and they're sharing it too. Sorry, I just got really excited because you know Boatworks today because I want an introduction yeah. there. I'm such a fan. I don't know, I don't know him. I, it's just the same thing when I reached out to you. It's like, <laughs> hey, I've watched her stuff. She knows what she's talking about. Ed knows what he's talking about. And they're like, I'm on the Chesapeake and I need help running by boat. I'm like, I'm pretty sure Captain Boobies <laughs> runs boats on the Chesapeake all the time. Like she's the yeah. person. And I, I got introduced to you from the, um, oh, what is it? All Things Boating Podcast. 
So probably three, oh, yeah. three, four yeah. years ago. Um, or no, the all docked up. Is all that docked what it up. Is? All docked yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah, and, Polly um, and uh, Captain Buzz, I think it was. There you yeah. go. And so you just you find these people in the industry, and they're you know everybody's got their little specialty. So on my lives, I'm like, I don't know, but I bet they do. <laughs> I, I don't know. Go check it. Well, I'll just pull them up. I'm like, yeah, they got a video on that. Go see them. That is way yeah, too oh, healthy cool. an attitude to have for a captain. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. Like I might Especially not know the Sunday answer night. to this. Like, <laughs> that is such a. The, how did you have such a healthy mm. attitude towards this whole boating thing? Because, I mean, I'm an egomaniac as a captain. <laughs> so I, I don't know how what? you got there. It, it's I, I'm a fraud. Like, you know, I'm a I'm a guy that I started. <laughs> my family had a boat when I was five. And I just like, right. yeah, I'm smart enough to start a YouTube channel and answer people's questions. And then every <laughs> time I go live, I've been doing it for three years now. Every time I go live, wow. I'm like. Oh shit! What's coming? You know what are they going to ask? This <laughs> They're going to find me out, you know. And, uh, right, so, and so I'm like, that's my that's my deflector. It's like I don't know, yeah. but I know who does. That makes me seem like I'm really in the know of, of what's happened in the industry. That's smart. All right. So so uh, I guess a follow up question to that. So you've been doing it three years. What uh, I guess three. This is a three parter. What's okay. been like the most common question you get? What's been uh, the best question that oh, you've man. gotten and then what has been the most like wtf moment <laughs> like <laughs> like okay, wait, wait, you, get... you should not be on a boat like period yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> give it back please all right let's start so most i get common. this all the time oh go ahead, yeah, go ahead. okay so let's yeah. start from the top because he gave you a yeah, list yeah, yeah. i can't keep track of our <laughs> list for that long let's start from the top most common question right the most common question is, hey, Matt, I'm looking at this, you know, 2000 Sea Ray 240 Sun Deck. Is mm -hmm. it at this price? Is it a good boat? I'm like, yeah, I, it depends. Like, it could be. It yeah, could right. be a great boat or it could be a piece of garbage that you should run from as fast mm -hmm. as you can. And so what I do is I try to be like, all right, let's start with tap the hull. Is the transom solid? Is everything right. solid? Let's go compression on the engine. Is that good? Pull the, you know, check the fluid in the in the lower unit. You got water in there. Ask questions about, you know, the service records and right. how's it been run? Where's it been run? And so, like, I can't inspect the boat, but I can try to help you do it. And um, I created this, uh, I call it a toolkit that I give people that just got all these questions in it and they can download it for free. Ooh. But that's the number one question I get. Okay. This yep. is the boat I'm looking at. Is it a good boat? Me like, too. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're selling you're selling to the same people I am. Yeah, but my I'm answer getting, is always yes. This is the <laughs> <laughs> absolutely best one ever made. And boy is it a deal. Boy is it a deal. You're gonna love it. I'm I'm joking. I'm, no, I'm I, I, <laughs> too honest. Yeah, Ed's, Ed's too honest. He doesn't make enough money. Yeah. That's why we're doing this podcast. Please sponsor us. <laughs> like, whoever out yeah. there in the world. This man yeah. doesn't make nearly enough money. He's way too honest of a boat broker. Like, yeah, help us out. No, but I, I I totally get where you're coming from, Matt. That makes that, that you you were walking down the list and like, oh, about this, and it, and you're hitting yeah. all the things. Yep. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so that's the most common. Okay. The best question you've had. The best one. The best one. Oh, hell, that's a tough one. Um, probably the best one is when I buy the boat, what should I do next? Like, I've mm. never owned a boat, never driven a boat. What should I do? And that's yeah. where, Captain Boomies, you came up in that one conversation. Like, <laughs> get trained. You know, yeah. I offer training that is online, how to operate a boat, single engine stern drive, single engine outboard pontoons and twins i need to do a jet and a, a single engine inboard wake boat version but like i offer for that but also get local boating knowledge if you're running up in the chesapeake there's places that you're just going to run aground if you don't know about them I, i've never boated up there but i just there just are yeah, they're, and if you can talk to somebody like captain boomies or another local captain they can help you avoid breaking your skag having to put a new prop on the first weekend you're out there. Um, and 
you're going to have so much more fun on the water with your family. If you just don't just run out there, load up the boat the first weekend and say, I got a new boat. Let's go. Like, hold right. on, figure out how to run that sucker first. Yeah. Figure out what a blower does and why that might be important to run every now and again. <laughs> it's it's just, think about those things and then mm. get out there. Right. It's funny. No, I usually get people after they've already gone out once and figured out that they need additional help. So yes. like, mm-hmm. they've already made a lot of mistakes that yeah. that automatically make them a better boater. I yes. But I wish I could be there sooner in the process. I, I love that people reach out to you during the buying process. I think that's really yeah. valuable and it makes me very happy to see that there are educated boaters out there. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. is a tough sell, though. I mean, it, uh, from my perspective, it's a tough sell because you've got somebody that's new into boating. They're buying a boat, possibly a bigger boat than what they probably should. But <laughs> <clears throat> it could happen. <laughs> uh, buy your second boat first, people. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it, that's a tough sell to they want to they have this moxie about it. And I'm going to go do it. And I've watched all these YouTube channels and they do it. And But yeah, you're exactly right. Once they have that mistake and then they're like ah yeah i probably should do a little something extra here to make you know the family a bit happier and nobody's trying to kill haul the captain right off the bat well those youtube (laughs) channels that you're talking about though they all need Mm. to be very dramatic so it's probably a good thing that they go face first at the biggest challenge (laughs) the content you know (laughs) yeah it's exactly it's it's funny my my sales on the on those type of programs it's not the week before memorial day that my sales take off it's the week after memorial day that they're like oh shit that was way harder than i thought it was gonna be uh, oh, you know these guys, they're successful right they got money they're successful in business and they're like yeah. i got it i'm a dude i got it I all right well it. they get out there and they're like i look like a total idiot uh, yeah. maybe just maybe i should call captain boobies maybe i should uh check this guy right. out and see if i can get some help i love that well, what good, was the third good. question awesome. i've forgotten like i said i would oh, what's the biggest wtf question he's had <laughs> oh the i get this one a lot i, I just i got it twice on last night's live oh, oh yeah um, it this is, is fresh i just got I inherited a family boat. Mm. So it was a, this particular one. There were two Regals, a 1995 uh, 28 Commander, like a, a Regal mm. Cruiser okay. that had been sitting two years. The oil had, the question had, like the oil had um, sodium in it. So the oil had been sitting a long time, was a little sludgy, right. I guess. I didn't know what that meant. But I was like, I know, I know that if it's been sitting for two years and it's a 1995, your air conditioner is going to need to be replaced if it hasn't. Your hot water heater is going to need to be dealt with if it hasn't. Your head is going to need to do some nasty work if it hasn't. Yeah. Generator needs to be checked. And then you've got a soft transom, That's which was the start of the question, the oh. oil in the soft yeah. transom. Like, you got a $10,000 boat that has twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 of yeah. repairs, <laughs> and then it's going to be worth $10,000, maybe 15 if you find somebody that's really looking for that exact boat. And right. I'm like, if it's a family heirloom and you're going to use it for 20 years and just the look at the boat I grew up on, this is amazing. Okay. But no, financially, it's yeah. a terrible decision. You know, you, right. you walk away if you haven't bought it yet. Walk away if you haven't hauled it down to your marina, which unfortunately he had. Oof. No. You. So yeah. sometimes the bearer of bad news on those, uh, uh, WTF questions. Yeah, yeah. Free is not always uh, free. <laughs> free boat is the most expensive <laughs> one there is. Free and yeah. 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 Like, yeah right? it's, it's never, oh, here's my uh, here's my 2015 Cobalt that you're going to love. With, uh, mm, you know, mm, it's mm, never mm, that. Mm, that's a great boat. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm>, or, <laughs> <laughs> Don't you ruin my fantasy. I, that's the mm. other thing is it could be like, hey, what did they do? Why is it uh, 20000 less than everything else on the market? Yeah. Uh, so all, all those things that you just don't know, and I get them. Uh, you never know yeah. what it's going to be, but it's always going to be interesting. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that indulgence. You you just articulated something, though, that I think both scares people away from boating and 
I worry that I need to scare people away from boating with because it's the the concept of the free boat being more expensive mm. and just how people people understand that their car is not an investment their car is going to depreciate I don't think people understand that boats are worse <laughs> boats are so much worse <laughs> yeah yes. um I've got one of the chapters in my book is um, is voting right for you. And so my my new Ooh. book that I uh, released, which is is why I reached out to you initially, is like voting's not for everybody. It's right. one if you don't have the disposable income to maintain, and not just buy it, but to maintain it to run it, mm -hmm. that thing's just going to go downhill in a, a two seasons. You know, right. if it's not maintained, if it's not run, your your investment's <laughs> gone. And then it's going to go down no matter how good you how good you take care of it. Right. It's just it's a depreciating asset, and it's got to be fun money that I'm fine. I'm fine investing this in my fun time, and I know that I'm not going to get a financial return. Well, now I realize there's something else that I want people to think about when they're buying a boat, and that is how do you react when your car needs some kind of emergency repair? Like, what right. is yeah. if your response That's, is like, like personally offended? <laughs> Like, <laughs> you're not going to want to have a boat. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're going to be offended an awful lot. Every season, as a matter of fact, you're going to be offended by something. Yeah. yeah. But if you can take it in stride, I always, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to refresh here on my on yeah. my drink, if you don't mind. Well, yeah, it's a good choice. So one thing I always tell uh, my customers, especially new customers, um, fender kickers or, you know, whoever we're showing boats to, <laughs> And you start to hear some dialogue that clues you in that they ha they're not really boaters yet, um, and you don't want to deter that dream because it's a it's a great thing if you can do it if you can pull it off it's fantastic. It's a mistake you should make over and over again. <clears throat> exactly. <laughs> but I always tell that wow well, it's just you know ask them about driving a boat or experience well I drive a car I've been driving a car for uh, your car won't sink <laughs> um, you know there's you can't just pull off to the side of the waterway and <laughs> take care of stuff. There's, there's a little bit of extra yeah. involved. And, um, but right on top of what you said, you've got to use the boat, you know, um, when they hear, Oh, engine's got a thousand hours. The generator's got 50. Ugh, that's no bueno. Uh, yes. you want the generator to be run, um, because it keeps it in working condition and, you know, things don't surprise you. And, and it's tough because you got people that are really excited about a boat. And then sometimes I feel like I'm hitting them with a ton of stuff that they, they don't want to hear, but they need to. Yeah. Yes. You know, and it's like, I don't want you to regret buying it. I want you to go into this purchase knowing full well that this is a huge mistake. Oh, Ed, <laughs> stop being one of the good no. ones. You're okay with that. Every no. week you're out there, you're like, this is the best mistake I've ever made. This is amazing. <laughs> That's what I mean. That's exactly what I mean. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, they, I want them to be well-educated. Uh, yeah, and it's not all, it's not always uh, a walk in the park, but it's a good thing. Like, I love working on my boat. I love it, and it needs yeah. a ton of work. But I I really enjoy doing that, um, so I try and prep them, you know, do the work or pay somebody to do Ed's it. Vote needs all yeah, one, one or the other. <laughs> yeah, it is but both of them. You know, I grew up. My family got a boat when I was five, and um, you know, Dad's rule was, "Hey, this we got this. We can go out, but you wash it and wax it. You clean it up every time." When we got old enough, we were we were the ones towing it and loading and unloading and doing all that stuff. And it was like, that was the responsibility. So I was, yeah. you know, eight years old underneath the 16 foot tri hall <laughs> waxing, you know, waxing the boat in the middle of August yeah. uh, before we went on vacation. It was like, got your, I'm a country fan. So you got your George Strait on your, your Conway Twitty or whoever. Mm -hmm. And um, I like that part of it to me is fun as well. The, just the being on the boat piddling, you know, yep. that's, that's as much fun almost as being out with my girls in the cove and watching the wakeboard and do that kind of stuff. Nice. This is the first time nice. that I've thought having children might be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, I mean, my girls are, are uh, just turned 10 and uh, 12 
and um, mm. going out on the water with them. I've got in my in my book, I've got a picture of my youngest when she was four months old, a life jacket up to oh. her, you know, up to her chin, <laughs> and just giggling. And it's one right. of my favorite pictures because they both started in months old on the water. They both never had a problem wearing their life jackets. And mm -hmm. now I've seen them progress. Like they love, we pull into a restaurant or something and my youngest is helping me with dock line. Oh, and she nice. can tie, you know, she can do a, a pretty good cleat hitch and she understands the movement of the boat and setting the lines. And she, we got to work on her, her uh, <laughs> subtlety, but she'll look at the boat next to us and be like, what are they doing? <laughs> oh, I love it. Like, hey, relax, relax. They're right there. <laughs> well done. You're well done. Well, it sounds like you also need to work on her chamois skills, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. little hands. Don't exactly. get into all those I'm a little wax on, wax off. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, no. My father also had me on boats very, very young, infant in one of those baby carriers. It's adorable and hilarious. And I don't know how he let my convinced my mother to let that happen, but um, <laughs> it it does create a sense of adventure in in very small people, and you do take responsibility for more sooner faster. And that was yes. something that served me really well when I was on like my friend's dad's boat, and I knew he was coming into the dock too hot. And I had a fender out and ready, but I knew not to have my fingers anywhere between there and the dock. And I'm, yeah. I'm telling my little friends like, hey, you should bring your hands inside the boat. <laughs> like, yeah. So I'm saving my other yeah. little friends. It's it's such a good thing to introduce kids to early. And I love yeah. that you're doing that. And I I love I just love those kind of stories. They make me so happy. <laughs> They're a lot different than my boat. stories growing up on the water. <laughs> uh oh, what were they? Were you getting I yelled was, at? I was hired. Well, I was unhired help. <laughs> uh, all of my uncles were watermen, so I'm baiting trot lines and you know uh -oh. cutting up horseshoe crabs for eel pots and oystering and fishing and all that stuff. But. Um, I've got yeah. this vision of you at like eight years old with a big beard. beard. I don't know if Full that's beard. how it was, but <laughs> right in my mind, that's kind of, like you're out there, big beard. <laughs> I've got some. I got some pictures. I'll send you that <laughs> later. I'm posting them. <laughs> <That'd be> awesome. <laughs> We're just gonna embarrass the heck out of Ed. It's gonna be adorable. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So Good luck. <laughs> what? The, okay. So you've you grew up on the water. You grew up loving boats. What? What got you to start doing boat stuff professionally? It was, I had, I owned a mortgage company for a number of years, like, um, and 07 hit the mortgage meltdown. Mm -hmm. And so I lost everything. Like I'm talking, I went from, I thought as a 20 year old, very successful, um, early thirties, lost everything, like starting from zero or starting negative. And so I just met my now wife and I said, Hey, honey, I think I want to go to the lake and work and sell boats. And she's like, um, oh, if that's what you want to do. And so it was sort of a personal crisis, a mental breakdown of sorts. <laughs> and so I went to the lake and I, I started selling boats, did that for five years. Um, and then we started having kids. We got married, had my first one. And when the second one was on the way, Ed, you know, mm. it's weekends. It's, yeah, you know, right. and I was at a marina, so it was, you know, five, mm -hmm. six days a week, every Saturday and Sunday. And my wife said, hey, I work full time. I want you to be a dad that's involved. And she said, I, I don't think that's I know you love it. And you're good at it, but I don't think that's what you need to be doing. Um, mm -hmm. So we talked about it and I stopped doing that and started doing consulting in the industry with dealers and brokers. Um, and that sort of led me into the what I'm doing now because it was teaching dealers how to do videos and you YouTube and do follow up and do marketing. And so it, you know, like I said, when the pandemic hit, it was just yeah. a natural progression to all right, do some videos. I got free time. And then YouTube sent me a check. And I was like, what the hell? Who knew? <laughs> I, I like it was it was just for fun. And I got 300 bucks. And I was like, this is amazing. I had I didn't know. So that's awesome. Good but that it was a it was a personal crisis of holy shit, what I thought I knew 
I don't. I'm not nearly as smart as I thought. And mm -hmm. let's start from scratch. Uh, that's so. that's broker life right there. Oh, in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> what was the last personal exactly. crisis you Complete had? Complete crisis. <laughs> what? Oh, <I> sell boats. <laughs> this is. What am I doing wrong? <laughs> Where's my crisis? I don't think you are. I think uh, it's, you're it's right. <laughs> I would recommend if you can avoid it. I would recommend yeah. avoiding losing everything and having the personal crisis to start. Uh, <laughs> really? I wasn't that smart, but. Turns out worked. Uh, and now, now I get to do this, which is, you know, 15 years ago, I would have never even considered that it was an option that, yeah. uh, you know, talk to hundreds of thousands of people a month that like, oh, this guy knows stuff. Like, right. why are you listening to me? I'm just, a <laughs> <laughs> it, it still floors me when people show up on the live and we've got a good community of, you know, probably 20 to 40 people that show up every Sunday. And I'm like, you're spending your time to just, and it's a group of the same ones over and over. And, and then, you know, the new ones come yeah. in and it just amazes me. We went two hours last night. <gasps> wow. And, and, you know, it's, uh, like I said, I feel like a fraud sometimes. And that's why I recommend go see Captain Boomies. Go, go <laughs> talk to this person. Go look at that person's side there. They know stuff. They know more stuff right. than me probably. Oh, that's so fun, man. I'm, I'm oh, so tickled is. that you've, created a life that is has ejected you from your crisis i suppose yeah uh, yeah i i think it, boats do that for a lot of people i think that's a very common strategy i'm just one of the lucky ones that started there and kept going <laughs> yeah <it> was, <laughs> that was i in 09 i had a youtube channel when i first started selling boats and i'm like if i would have only known if i would have just kept going on that path you know, what would I have had now? But there was a, there was a yeah. stop in between when it, I changed my focus, but it's fun. You get to go on the water and you're helping people. You, the people you meet are, right. it's incredible. It's incredible what we get to do. And, um, well, how often, you know, I, I get pictures. Sorry. How often do you get to go out on the water? Because I, I feel like I always see you when you're in this space talking to yeah. nut jobs like me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fortunate that, my in-laws um, have a place on Lake Loudon in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I'm 30, 45 minutes from Lake Wiley and Lake Norman. So, you know, in the summertime, we're out there. My family has a place and has had a place at Lake of the Ozarks oh. since 99. Um, oh. I'm three hours from the coast. And so I, I'm, I get a boat in all these different places. Um, and, but we're out, you know, 15, 20 times. And, I might go out and just film by myself, but my favorite time is load my girls up, my wife, and just the four of us, and we have family time. That's mm -hmm. that's the fun. But my wife said there's no cameras on family <laughs> boat. Like there's, <laughs> so I don't get a film on family boat day. That uh, is uh, that is off limits. So most of mine is just education focused, and um, every now and again I sneak in a couple shots. But but she she was pretty pretty adamant that I'm not a. I'm not an influencer in that way. I could teach. I could educate. You're not doing <laughs> lifestyle. Time time. Yeah. Uh, Dude, you're not influencing me. You know, and, and my kids remind me of that all the time. They're like, you are not an influencer. Oh. You're not at all. But I'm a big deal. Uh, <laughs> you have any idea how many subscribers I have? It's amazing. Yeah, I get reminded right, all the time exactly. I'm not an influencer. <laughs> I don't even have kids. <laughs> I, oh I yeah, yeah. Try that. I just go around some kids and just tell them, like, I'm an influencer. Like, we don't know you. Yeah, You're not right? just a beast. Forget it. I just call myself uh, an internet idiot. <laughs> it sort of yeah. it solves a lot of these problems. I just embarrass myself on the internet and hope that other people learn from it. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh. So, I love awesome. that. I completely love what you're doing. I I love your energy. I love how you approach this whole boating thing. And I, I I'm freaked out though by your ability to know the exact boat people are asking you about. Like you mm. know things like somebody will say um this year, this model, and you'll ask them, did you get this engine or this engine? <laughs> and that <laughs> freaks me out because there's no way I can keep track of that kind of detail. So how, are you just a savant? Like what? 
<laughs> like, how does that work? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the idiot part of that. I'm the, I'm like the idiot or the idiot internet person. That's good. I I don't know. I've I've been told like my my brain just remembers stuff. And Ed, you know, if, if you're on a boat, yep. it just it's like my daughter it does dance and cheer. And I'm like, how do you understand? How do you remember the steps? And she's in seven different classes. Like she gets that okay. for whatever reason that just sticks in my head. And, and I've right. been around it long enough that I've seen all these different things. I sold for a number of years. And I also get people asking me, you know, there's you can pick a pretty good guess on if it's a if it's a stern drive. It's either got a Volvo or a Mercruiser. You can kind of like it's 26 yeah. feet. All right. It probably has one of these two engines in it. So yeah. some of it's a parlor trick. Like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> I'm telling everyone. <laughs> the envelope. <laughs> the question is. <laughs> yeah. You know, Karnak. You know. yeah, right. Swami, I get it. All right. That's I. OK, that makes me feel a little bit better because I I probably yeah. captain a like 70 different boats a year. And I pride myself on being able to walk on board and pretty much know what I'm looking at, which is why yes. I, I make yeah. a point to go to so many boat shows is so that I'm not surprised when I get on a boat and I go, oh, what is this? I've never seen this before. <laughs> See, and that's what blows me away is like, I know boats, but I've run bow riders, pontoons, center consoles, jet boats, but you start getting, you know, talking about running a 60 footer. I've seen some of your videos where you're, you know, that's way outside. Okay, of my I'm going to let I, you in on a secret. <laughs> it's, it's, easy, it's easier. It's, it's so easier. much easier. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I grew up in Nebraska. I, you know, the lake I grew up on was, you know, I don't know how many acres, but we could ski around it like five times before you got tired. Sure. And, and you know, I've, I've run on the coast, but I'm an inland lake guy. Mm -hmm. And so you, you run into, you know, 50, 60, 70. I mean, you're running big stuff on the coast. Bigger that, that blows me away because that freaks me out. I'm like, I'm going to take a hard pass on doing that for right so, now. So the hardest uh, part about what I do on bigger boats and, and 60 foot is on the small side for me. But like, yeah, um, I'm like, holy crap. But the bigger the Thank boat, you. the slower <laughs> everything happens. So you put it in gear and like, Oh, okay. There it is. <laughs> what, about, what about the wind and the current? Slower. And Everything happens slower. Isn't it really? Yeah. Just so much slower. So you have, right. you really have more time to react and respond to things. So, you know, if you have all the good habits though of, okay, just outside the marina, I sit here and I see whether the wind is more important or the current is more important. And you let that kind of happen with you. You, current is always going to be a bigger factor than wind even on a big ass mm. boat uh it's just got more water line to deal with it and so you you put all this together and then know that you probably have better control from a bigger boat because you're going to have more types of control so you're going to have your bow thruster you're going to well, have your stern yeah. thruster you're going to have your pods you're going to have at least two engines to work with you're going to have all of this stuff that makes it so much simpler. Yeah. The thing that you're going to get a little freaked out about though is, oh man, this, um, this chart plotting system is different than the last one that I used. And I did all of my prep work in Navionics and this is Raymarine and like, yeah. oh my God, I'm gonna have to transfer this all over. <laughs> it's the, <Yeah. laughs> it's the, the tech that gets in the way the more tech. than anything yeah. else. Um, and that's that's the way bigger boats are going. You're just going to have to get more and more tech savvy as yeah. uh, as the future comes at us full force, smacking you in the face. Yeah. It's real uncomfortable. Oh, yeah. It's, it's amazing <laughs> what's all coming out. Uh, Case in point. Yeah, that, that impresses me more than anything. And like, I got to give you credit. You talked about your, your um, I think it was Bahamas trip, where you, you came in a little hot because you didn't uh, test out the controls. Like oh, yeah, one of my yeah. biggest fears is that somebody's going to record me coming into a dock. <laughs> and it's not. <laughs> and I look like an idiot. I'm like that is my biggest fear. Oh, it's horrible. You know? <laughs> oh my god, that's the worst thing that can happen to me. I think right now. But then so you're I, just going to own I'm it. We just say, hey, <laughs> it happens to all of us. You know, yeah. every now and again, you get a little, little overly uh, impatient, maybe, yeah. and just let's get this on the dock and 
Uh, so that made me feel a little better about my my <laughs> nerves. Yeah, Sorry it's not if, that. it's okay. when. Right? Captain Boobies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, honestly, it make it makes me love the big boats even more because that if that thing had had a bow thruster, <laughs> <laughs> inferior technology—that's the problem, right? No, no, no. Well, that was a hundred percent my fault. I should have done a lot more testing outside the marina. Well, but I was the case yeah. in point. The case in point, I was on a southerly fifty-seven sailboat uh, sea trial, just a sea trial uh, last Thursday, and. It took us 45 minutes to figure out what, how to unfurl the sail no, properly because no. it wasn't furled in the correct way. So we had to like over correct and make sure it came out. And Oh, because they, they wrapped it the wrong way. Is that what you're saying? It was it was a boom. So the boom furl for the sailboat, it was but we just took it methodically. I mean everything on a sailboat's push button you're like what the hell? i don't even need to be here i'm just missing <laughs> and I for everything I lied. for everything i do have a secret weapon it's crazy. i know that i said earlier i don't have secrets but i i do have a secret weapon and that is my husband so anytime yeah. i've He's my like, secret <laughs> weapon too. <laughs> so my husband was my ship's engineer on the big yachts and now he manages a shipyard a boatyard um where he fixes all kinds of small power, power private boats, pleasure boats. That's the yeah. word I'm looking for. Pleasure boats. Yeah. So I can break anything. <laughs> 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 and then I just call him up and he goes, okay, put the boat on the phone. And I <laughs> hit the little video button and I go, Okay, this is what yeah. it's doing. <laughs> well, have a look. One of my favorite videos of yours was uh, you put, there was, I think it was a little whaler or maybe it was a bay liner, but, but you were trying to get something off that was put on with 5200. Oh, oh, yes. That's my favorite too. Hammering. I don't know. That was a long time ago, but that was it one was. of the first things I watched years. And I'm like, this is real world stuff right here. Like, this is what you really deal with. <laughs> Talking about boating's not all fun in the sun. Yes. Like, it is. That's the kind of shit you got to deal with every now and again. Oh, God, the used I, boat market in 5200. <laughs> Just kill me. Kill me now. <laughs> Captain Matt, I had that same conversation with her six months ago. I was like, oh, my God, I found YouTube gold here. <laughs> Have you seen this video? I don't know if you were, how long ago was that? It, it oh, seems it's like years it was and years ago. ago. But I, I still fight yeah. with people about it. <laughs> I still fight with people about it. It's fun yeah. though. Oh, that God. was a good one. That's a good one. Good job. You've done your research, Kevin. <laughs> I'm I impressed. follow everybody because one, I'm like I said, I I like to know who's doing what to make recommendations, and also right. like it's just fun. Like your your video, yeah. my videos are you watch it. It's ugly and it's not produced. And it's educational. It's just I information. It <laughs> and I see, I see you doing yours, and you got the personality, and you're, you know, you've got editing skills. You got, you know, fun okay. stuff going on. You're on these crazy boats. I have no access to. And um, I love our podcast. Like, dang, I wish I had. Boat skills. I love that everything that's really happening right nice now. Boat skills. <laughs> yeah, this is the best episode. I'm ever. very much yeah. enjoying it. Um, <laughs> let's never stop. <laughs> I lied. Let's stop for a second because I'm yeah. out of beer. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, time to refill. Yeah. Give me just refresh. And also I need to let my husband know that he can come inside. <laughs> <laughs> He's been out. He's been out on the side. So she'll edit most of this. Oh stuff. yeah, that's that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how long how long have you been how long have you been brokering? I have been brokering since 2019. Okay. Uh, the fall of 2019 before this shit hit the fan. Um, but I grew up on boats. Um, yeah. On the Chesapeake. Literally grew up on boats. Um, went to Kings Point, U.S. Merchant Marine Academy. I've sailed all over the Pacific, um, Alaska. Oh, wow. Singapore, all, everywhere. Um, With pleasure? Yeah, or was, so or were, you, were you working? I was as a cadet um, most of the time out there. Okay. And then um, also uh, getting out of there, I had a, a commission in the Navy as well, but that was mainly reserve duty and keeping up with my um, 
STCW commitment. I know you're talking shit about me, but I can't hear you, so. No, we're not. <laughs> Can you believe she did we should, that? Have, we should have been. Yeah. We should have been. But, uh, yeah, I, I totally got it, more miles so. than she does. Yeah. I got way more miles than she does. Like, what the hell was going on while I was gone? <laughs> wait, wait. Are, is Ed talking smack about the fact that he's saltier than I am? Because he is. But don't tell anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was a little bit. I was born from an oyster and a blue crab. <laughs> Just mm. a big and we're back from a mm. quick break. And Ed's saltier yeah. than I am. I will admit to this. It's depressing, but true. He's he's got more swallows on him than I will ever have. Gross. More swallows yeah. on him? Uh, Is that what you said? Yes. Oh, come on now. I don't know what that so, means. Every 5,000 miles, traditional tattoo is a swallow. Uh, really? And that's, that means 5,000 miles under the keel. Okay. Interesting. See, I'm, I'm a ca- I've am i got my captain's license for real, but I don't do captain shit. Like, I'm, right. I'm not, uh, you know, it's just, it's just something that I'm like, if I'm going to train people how to run boats, I probably should have a legit captain's license, but right. that's, well, that's as helps. close as I get to doing real captain stuff. <laughs> I'm just the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are terrible. I don't have my license anymore. I don't need the man to tell me I can run By choice. By it. choice. <laughs> <laughs> that incident in Singapore is not relevant at all. <laughs> so, so you got your captain's license so that you could be even more helpful to people. What What did you... Did you... Did getting your captain's license make it so you were more helpful to people or do you feel like you no. were okay. no my my wife said my wife's a rule follower i am not i am a i'm a hey just let, let's use some common sense i'm a common sense person and my, my my wife is a rule follower and she said listen you just need to go get your like you qualify for it you've been running boats forever just go take yeah. the training i know the guy that runs the class and um she's like just do it I said all right honey i'll do it you know, and so I got it. And now I feel more legit, you know, be like, I can, this is what I do. You can see it's not used at all, but I keep it here. So on my lives, I can show it every now and again, if I need to really mm-hmm. prove that I'm, uh, I know what I'm talking about, but it doesn't, I mean, you know, I mind. it's not, uh, it's not getting know. used in my, uh, my daily life at yeah. all. That's so interesting. I I love mm. having a license. I do. I am semi retired is what I'm going to call it. I don't rely <laughs> on my license anymore for the dollars and cents in my life, but I do rely on it to make me money for fun money, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's my mm. side job now, which is weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, hustle. But that does mean that I have to maintain it. So I do still have mm-hmm. to hit certain numbers in order to maintain my license and that's i don't know why ed gave his oh oh, wait no because he has a bigger license than i do and for him to maintain it he would have to like literally go away to sea for months at a time okay yeah yeah see i'm minus 25 ton 25 ton master inland like so I just got my consortium um, right. in the mail today, but that's right. about all I've got to do to keep up with it, you know, Being a run, run a little bit. And, and uh, so, like I said, I'm a, I'm a captain, but I'm kind of a pretend captain. So. No, you can still. No, it all counts. It all Honestly, counts. Honestly, the, the captain that I know that made the most money ran a tiki bar barge. Really? And made tips like a monster. <laughs> yeah, that's what I- that's what I really Four need to do. Four runs a I day, at mm. least three hundred dollars a run in tips. Crazy! Wow! Yeah, most money I've ever seen. And you know what license he had? Twenty five inland. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, maybe. Yeah. maybe I've just found a new angle on my. Uh, there my you go. <laughs> Look out, lakes! Here we come. <laughs> like, Lake Norman, here I come. Oh. Captain Matt, go charter. Let's go. Let's do this. Oh my goodness. Okay, this right. this is so much fun. I'm panicking now though because I feel like I I I'm going way over time than we normally do. Ooh, Ooh, um, so so Ed, it's panic time. Mm, do you have any last panic. questions that you'd like to ask Captain Matt? Yes. Thank you for including me in that. I know. Uh, usually I have to like wait. Wait. wait I got panic. One. <laughs> 
stop. Uh, so, Captain Matt, um, it's been a quick three years. A lot has happened. Where do you see Captain Matt and the uh, secret weapon going in the next couple of years? What One of the things that I've, I've decided early on was I wasn't going to take money from manufacturers. So I wasn't going to mm -hmm. become a spokesperson for a manufacturer. So I can say whatever I want about anything um, right. in, in boating. So one of the things I would like to do is to do more boat, actual boat reviews um, mm -hmm. and some dive a little deeper into the brands and give people a better idea of, uh, you know, we, we talked about cobalt. I'm, I'm fortunate my right. in-laws have a, have an R5 uh, on, on Loudon mm -hmm. and I get to run a bunch of different boats, but to give people an idea of, okay, a Bayliner is a less expensive boat, a Trophy, a Mako are less expensive boats, but it still could be a perfect boat for some people, right? It, it doesn't matter. You don't need the top of the line. Matter of right. fact, you probably don't need new either, especially if you're new to boating, like right. maybe that middle tier used boat. So I want to dive deeper into different styles, different mm -hmm. manufacturers and, and, um, share that with people yep. because they just, it's so hard. There's so many nuances in boating that if you're a first time buyer, you need somebody that you can trust. That's not on a payroll to say the right things about a certain brand or a certain right. product. And so I want to sort of be that, Hey, I can trust this guy because I know it's just my opinion, right? I'm not, yep. I'm not that much more knowledgeable than anybody else, but I'm willing to do it and just put it out there. That's what I would like to see and be the go-to person for is people that are shopping that don't have a, an honest broker like you in their market area that they can hopefully find um, and be like, okay, I can maybe sort out the honest ones from the little shadier. I don't know right. if there's any shady ones in your area, but um, just to help people make the right decision. So when it comes to getting out on the boat, it's not the boat's problem or it's not a boat problem that causes them not to enjoy it as much as the three of us have you know right it's, yeah that, that's kind of where i see it going yeah. um as Absolutely. far as the channel goes that's fantastic that's literally <laughs> i've told kate i've told captain boomies this multiple times this is a that's exactly what i'm looking to do with yacht brokerage which is literally my bread and butter i would much rather sell a used boat than a new boat um, because I feel like I'm, I'm give, I'm, I'm able to put the person into the boat that they want, not me forcing a person into a boat that I have, if that yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes the boat that I have, the new boat is the one that they want, but, uh, that's not as common. And I prefer to, I love being a buyer's broker. I love you know, shopping for that person with their checklist and getting that done for the exact same reasons that you just mentioned, you know, you're, you're connecting them with the boat and the situation that they'll be boating in. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. That's fantastic. It's too, easy, it's too easy to make a mistake because you just, you don't know what right. you know and what captain Boomies knows and what, what I've gathered over the, over the years. And that's such a critical decision. Choosing, yeah. you know, choosing the wrong style, the wrong brand, choosing a boat that's a, you know, it's got a, a soft transom that's got mm -hmm. something that you didn't even know to look at. Like you didn't right. even know that's something you should check out. Yeah. You buy it, and next thing you know, you got a money pit, and then boating sucks. You know, break out another thousand. Best day of a boater's life is the day they buy and sell. Like yeah. no, not if you do it right, and you can, you know, the the memories of you growing up. Uh, with your dad teaching the responsibilities and the, all the stuff that has come to us because we got introduced to boating at an early age. And now, you know, 40 some years later, it's, it's what we do. Well, 40 some for me, I, I'm not going to put that on anybody else on the screen, but uh, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so it's like that, that time that, I mean, I have so many great memories with my parents and my brother and sister and my aunts and uncles. And now my kids and my in-laws and my wife, that just would have never happened had the first parents my or the first boat my parents bought been a piece of junk or been the right. wrong boat. It just yeah. wouldn't happen. So, yep, awesome, excellent, excellent, well said, sir. Well said. 
Here, here. Well, I said, oh my God, this was too good. I loved this. This was so yeah. much fun. Thank you so much, Captain Matt. <laughs> Go check out the voter's secret weapon. This man. Yes. Total secret ninja styles. Blah, blah. <laughs> secret weapon. Pew or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it is very James Bondy. I'm, I'm I kind of like it. All right. This nice. has been the Funny Boat Podcast. Bon voyage. Seriously, oh, yeah. love this. So much fun. Thanks for having me on, guys. This was a lot Absolutely. of fun. I want to go buy another boat. Sweet. <laughs> I can never have too many.